Dear Regina Sailing family and friends and all others who want to listen and learn a little bit more about celestial navigation. In this episode we will start off by understanding what is the horizon and what corrections do we need to do um, after we have taken the correct angle, measured and read off the sextant until we can use it as a true observed altitude in our calculations. In an earlier episode, we looked at the mirrors on, of the sextant and we used a tool to change the angle of the mirrors a little bit to make sure that the sextant measures as accurately as possible. That's called HS. But in our books, in our calculations, we need the observed altitude. We need to do some corrections to then go get to the HO, to the observed altitude, and that's the true altitude that we measured. And let me explain uh, why we need to do these corrections and what do we correct, have to correct for. Well, first of all, we're looking at the horizon. The horizon is beautiful. And on a flat, calm day like this, in the middle of the Atlantic, how wonderful it is to sit on deck and play around with the sextant because the boat is not rocking and you can do really, really accurate shots. This is, by the way, on the way from the BVI, the British Virgin Islands, in the Caribbean, uh, back over the Atlantic uh, to Europe uh, on our way to Bermuda. And it was dead calm. It was fantastic. We motored for five or six days. The only really minor room for improvement here was that on these beautiful days, the color of the Atlantic and the color of the uh, sky was quite similar. So the horizon was not as crispy as on it was on this picture on the Bay of Biscay on a Yachtmaster Ocean uh, qualifying leg where the, we have a dark sea and a light blue sky. It's just crisp clear. Sometimes you don't see the horizon at all. So that can be a misty day. This is an extreme that uh, was in Scotland uh, and I sailed in the early morning. The sun was really bright and nicely seen on the blue sky, but the horizon had gone. So sometimes you don't have a horizon at all. I'll show you how this could look typically. It's a little bit difficult in a theory class to show how it feels to look through a sextant, but I'll show you how it goes in principle. So you take your sextant and you scan the horizon where you think that the sun will be. And it's mainly typically where the sea is the brightest where you have glitter. And then you move the index arm to and fro, and most probably you have approximately um, judged how high the sun is. So you've preset your sextant to that altitude. And then you move the arm to and fro, and there the sun comes. It's a bit faint, as you can see. And theoretically, but only in theory, this is where the sun should be. It's very impractical, and that's why you don't do it, because the horizon is not so clearly visible. Um, and with the shading glasses on the index uh, mirror, the index shades, also make the sun look quite faint. So it's very difficult to judge when the center of the sun is exactly on the horizon. On stars it's not an issue because they're so small, they're just a little dot, so you place the dot on the horizon. But with the sun um, you do a little trick. Namely, you have the sun here, you move the index arm, and this is how, uh, theoretically, we wanted to have the sun. But what you do is you take the semi-diameter of the sun, and you take that into consideration, and you place it on top of the horizon instead. And that's much easier to judge if the sun is nicely placed on the horizon. We still have one possible error still, that is that we could um, have the sextant in an angle, so we would measure a too big angle. So that's why it's important that you tilt the sextant while you look through, forward and backward, and make sure that the 
sun exactly just kisses the horizon. And that is called to measure the lower limb. So here you have to add a correction. You have to add a semi-diameter of the sun. Now, in rare occasions, it could be cloudy, so you only see a bit of the sun through a hole in the clouds, and this bit that you see would be the upper limb. So in rare occasions, you could also measure like this, namely putting the upper limb onto the horizon, or rather under the horizon, but then you have to subtract half a diameter of the sun. So the corrections of the semi-diameter of the sun or the moon um, is done depending on if you're shooting the lower limb or the upper limb. Very unusual. Only with stars you shoot in the middle because stars are so small uh, that they don't have a diameter at all. Another thing we have to take into consideration is the height of eye. The theoretical horizon is at sea level. But we are not at sea level, so we are a bit higher up. So from Yachtmaster Coastal or Yachtmaster Offshore Course, or even in the Dayskipper Course maybe, I sometimes mention it, that depending on how high you up with your eye, you can see further away or not so far away. So this picture maybe is familiar to you, that if you are in a boat, you can see a certain distance. And if you are high up in the lighthouse, you can see much further away. So the horizon is not always as far as you think it is. And more importantly, the angle differs. So let me show this to you. Here we have our boat and our star. And the theoretical horizon is this. It is at sea level. But if we are two meters above sea level, at deck level for instance, we have this purple horizon. And you can see that it has another angle further to the fact that you can see further. And if you're up in the masttop, you can see even further. Well, that is something we have learned in previous courses. But the angle of the horizon is also different. So depending on where you measure, you get different angles. So if you are at sea level, you get this angle. And if you are on deck level and use your sextant, you get a bigger angle. And up here, you get an even bigger angle. And this correction is called the dip. And the dip is correct, uh, correction, and it's depending on the height of the eye. And it's always negative, because you always will measure a too big angle. And then, uh, finally, we also have a question of waves. If we, if we have waves, do we have to take the waves into consideration when it comes to calculating the dip? No, don't worry about the waves. Why? Because you would instinctively take the uh, sextant shot on a crest of the wave, when you are at the top of the wave. And when you are on the top of the wave, measuring the angle, you would uh, look at the horizon, and the horizon is also having a crest. Because you can't look down into the uh, valleys of the waves. You, you look from one crest to another crest, and if you assume that these two waves are about the same height, then you, uh, they will take out uh, each other. So don't worry about the waves. It's uh, only uh, a question about the eye height above the sea level. Then we have another problem, and that is the refraction. So when the sun is low, um, it isn't where it, uh, where it seems to be. So this sun is just about to disappear behind the horizon, but you still see it quite high above the horizon. And the reason is that we can look behind the horizon thanks to the fact that we have refraction. Maybe you remember that from physics. We have our little boat here and the star there, and we have the horizon uh, which we look at. And this is the angle that we really want to measure, the angle between the star and our horizon. The height of the eye has already been taken care of in the dip, uh, and here this angle we think that we are measuring. But if you remember, th the Earth has an atmosphere, and refraction means that if a light beam goes from one medium to another medium, here vacuum and air, um, it refracts, it bends. So when we look up uh, to the star, we think that it's over here instead. So we measure again an angle which is too high, uh, too big. It also depends on the measured angle. So if the angle is 90 degrees, the refraction would be zero. 
And if the angle is very small, the refraction would be huge. And that's why the, I said the tip should be to measure the sun uh, or any celestial body when the angle on the sextant is bigger than 10 degrees. So that's important. In many correction tables, the correction for the refraction is built into the correction for the semi-diameter. Another problem we have is the question if the beams are really parallel. Remember this picture and where I said the star is very far away, that uh, the, the beams are parallel, the one that goes through the center of the Earth and the other one that goes to us. These are only parallel if the star is very, very far away. But as soon as we use something in the solar system, we need to take the um, parallax, as it's called, into consideration. The closer the body, the bigger the parallax. The parallax is huge for the moon, and uh, for stars, they are non-existent. All these corrections need to be dealt with, but don't worry, we do it step by step, in five steps. Step number one is the index error. That is what I have already mentioned to you. That is uh, a sext uh, uh, an error on the sextant, where we just note if it's on the arc or off the arc. The second error is the dip or height of eye, as I mentioned. So that is this thing that the higher up we are, the uh, bigger the angle will be. The third correction is the refraction with the where the beams of the sun are bent. And the uh, fourth correction is the semi-diameter. The semi-diameter, depending on if we measure the upper limb or the lower limb. And the fifth uh, correction is the parallax. And uh, to imagine what the parallax is, just use your finger and hold it in front of your eye. And then one time you look with the left eye and the other time you look at the, with the right eye and you can see as if it is moving to and fro and that is the parallax because the eyes are not in one position. The eyes are, you have two eyes and uh, so if you either look for, from one eye or another eye you have two different perspectives. So this is the summary. So we can say that the refraction of the uh, sun is under six minutes, so we have to take that into consideration because six minutes is six nautical miles, as we know. If you think these steps are a bit complicated and difficult to remember, it's so easy because I have built them all, all into a template. So when we then go and do the practical exercises and uh, do some calculations, you will see that all the corrections we do on the sextant will come naturally, step one, step two, step three, on my template that I have made. Uh, of course, shaky hands is something that you uh, cannot uh, correct against. Uh, that's something you have to uh, practice. Uh, it's not that difficult, actually, to shoot anything with a sextant. If you sit nicely or you can um, or lean against something, like on this picture here, um, he is, uh, uh, Andreas here, standing up on the Bay of Biscay, uh, leaning against the push pit, and it's so, not so difficult to get good shots, and we will practice that in, in uh, reality. And the tips we I can give here on a clear day is shoot from high up, like Andreas is doing here, uh, in a haze, maybe shoot from further down, sit on deck, and then uh, take several shots for to check uh, for the best one. So, uh, trying to find the best shot is easily done with a piece of paper. Uh, here is an uh, example that uh, if you take um, the x-axis and uh, put the time here and the y-axis and take the hs, hs is what you measure on the sextant, what you read off the micrometer. And a good tip is to uh, put the minutes down here on the x-axis and have six boxes between the minutes. And if you have them six boxes apart, every box corresponds to uh, 10 seconds. So if you then have uh, one box per 10 seconds, it's easier to draw. And here you take the lowest shot on your uh, series and the highest shot in your series, and you take uh, one box per minute, so from 50 to 55, 
there are five boxes and then from 55 to 60 or the next degree zero zero um, again five boxes and then to five minutes and ten minutes on the micrometer so what you do now you shoot a couple of times and and note down make crosses where uh, they uh, belong so in the first uh, suggestion uh, first example you have uh, 14 minutes and some uh, 15 seconds and you measured it at uh, six minutes on the micrometer and then you write down note down the second uh, cross and the third which looks a bit strange it's a bit off there and then the fourth and fifth and this off shot that's exactly what we want to uh, determine so when you come uh, draw these uh, when you draw a straight line through them you can easily see which one is off and which one seems to be quite accurate so the third shot there I don't know what happened somebody must have miss uh, red or maybe shot the sun a little bit uh, too early or too late and uh, or so here you can pick the one that is uh, looks most accurate <laughs>